Hey everybody, welcome to Santa Barbara Talks with Josh Molina. I want to talk to you about the heroic work that is going on all over this country on colleges and universities, uh, high school campuses, the heroic work of student journalists. Before we get there, please hit subscribe on YouTube and also visit my website, santabarbaratalks.com. Consider a financial contribution to support these podcasts. As some of you know, I am a journalist. I also teach journalism. I'm very deeply embedded in both worlds of doing as well as teaching. And so with that, I want to talk to you today about the amazing work that student journalists are doing all over this country on a high school level, colleges, campuses. Okay. We know bigger context Many universities have entirely lost control in how they were managing these protests going on over the war in Gaza, okay? And so we know about that. That's all over the news. What we are seeing now are student journalists who are in the line of fire trying to report this important um, news, this important issue, and trying to bring this story out. And so we've had pro-Palestinian uh, uh, protesters setting up camps entirely um, appropriate, First Amendment rights to do this. And then, of course, we've had counter-protesters. And then at some of these campuses, it has exploded. It is obviously um, not everywhere. It's not every campus in America. Uh, many campuses are handling this well, much better than some of the ones that have gotten a lot of the attention in the mainstream media. But I want to talk to you about the work that student journalists are doing because it's such a it's such an island. Uh, most people don't think of what journalists do through the lens of active news gathering. It's a really difficult thing if you haven't been trained as a journalist, and particularly if you grew up this generation with the current media environment where there's so much skepticism around the work that journalists do. I mean, we live in an era where the former president was creating this narrative that there's fake news. Anytime there was a story that came out that he disagreed with or that portrayed him poorly or por portrayed his issues or his friends poorly. So that whole generation has grown up with this skepticism of what journalism is. And so I want to just sort of pull back a little bit and talk about it is so difficult, so hard to be a journalist. I always say that it is the closest to divine work of any profession that you can have because you have to seek truth and report it even if you internally have a perspective that you might disagree with on what you're reporting on. That is incredible that somebody is, has those skills, that they're trained to do that, because most of what we teach people, and rightfully so, is to use our voice, to speak out, to take a stand, to don't idly watch things pass you by, to make a difference in this world. We tell our children that. We tell them in just about every context and every environment. And part of that is great, right? It's appropriate. We want leaders in our communities. But I think there's a lack of understanding and respect that is that goes toward journalists because journalists have to navigate through all of the various perspectives, including their own, to report news and find the story. And sometimes, many times, we have to do it under adversarial circumstances. So think about this. You've got contention on these college campuses. You've got conflict. You've got controversy. You have protesters. You have counter-protesters. You have administration and university, and then you have people, journalists, trying to report on that. There's skepticism. There's a feeling of lack of trust. But journalists can't just go home. Journalists can't just say, okay, no one wants to talk to me. Uh, no one wants to be photographed. So let's just not report that. Because that's not how we're wired. Our mission is to seek truth and report it even when people don't want you to do that. In fact, that's 
the highest calling of journalism. J lots of journalism is easy, right? People want to talk to you. They want to promote an agenda. They want to push themselves, their project, their proposal. Uh, public relations, of course, is very uh, helpful to this mission for a client. But journalism, the highest level of journalism comes when people are uncomfortable with the fact that you are reporting on it. So macro, big picture, why do we exist? We exist to shine a light on systems that are broken. We exist to shine a light on systems so that things can change, so that we can redistribute information from those in power who have it to everyone else who does not have power. Once everybody has equal access to information, then our populace can make informed decisions and make informed choices. And that is how the journalist does their advocacy, not by taking stands on things, by trying to say, everybody has a right to this information. Everybody needs to know what is happening here. It is not just the people in power who have the access to information, because guess what? When you don't share the information, the gaps between the wealthy and the poor, they grow. People who are at the top of the economic pyramid, uh, scale, they don't necessarily need all that information shared because they're good. They're fine with doing what they're doing. They're in a comfortable space. It's the people who are scratching and clawing and fighting for access, for information, for power, for a seat at the table that benefit from information being shared. And so that's what a journalist does. It says, hey, here's all the information for everyone to process and understand and then make decisions based off of that. And a lot of people do not like that. And so when we look at what's happening on college campuses and universities, think about being a 20 year old student journalist and you have your you know, your feelings, your own passions about what is happening in Gaza, right? But your job is not to go out there and perpetuate an agenda. Your job is to go out there and capture the essence of what is happening among the protesters and the counter protesters and the administration. And we've seen so many examples now throughout the country of student journalists putting their safety at risk in pursuit of that news, regardless of what they think about any of it personally. It doesn't matter what they think, because what they think is, I want to get truth and I want to report it. And that is more important than anyone's individual opinion. We've had journalists who've been attacked, pepper sprayed, uh, accosted, right, roughed up, horrible circumstances. But it's amazing that they're still willing to pursue the news in the face of this adversity. And it gives me so much hope for the future at a time when the entire industry is struggling. We know this, that iPhone, right? The internet, it's not a new thing. We've seen journalism declining over the last 10, 15 years because people are not reading physical newspapers as much. They're not consuming as much content. The advertising has gone away. And so now they're on their phones and they grew up in a generation where news was sort of free. The industry is declining. We have fewer people who are dependent on the value of that newspaper or that mass media or that free press because they feel as though social media, they can get all the information from word of mouth. And I'll get to social media in a second. And they also just feel like they can just uh, get by in the world without having any institution tell you what the news is, okay? And so there are some positives to that evolution, of course, but the bottom line is journalism is not seen as the kind of industry that is sexy, that is attractive, where there's some allure, like, oh, you're going to be a journalist. No, it's usually met with, you know, you're not going to make a lot of money if you become a journalist. And why don't you consider this other field? Why don't you consider these other fields that you're going to make more money and have a more comfortable life? Here's the thing, <laughs> people go into journalism not to become millionaires. They go into journalism to seek truth and report it and change the world 
through shining a light on systems that are broken so that hopefully those systems get fixed and corrected and we have greater access for everybody to information to make better decisions to empower themselves in this world. That is worth a million dollars. That is worth any amount of money because when you can look yourself in the mirror at the end of the day and say, I put myself out there in pursuit of the news, regardless of my own personal agenda, that is holy. That is spiritual, regardless of what you believe in. If you believe in anything else outside of this world, that calling is the most important calling a journalist can have, a person can have. And so we're seeing this group, this generation of journalists covering this campus unrest, and we're seeing them be heroes and brave. And I hope that this inspires these individuals to pursue and continue in journalism because we need them now more than ever. We need to stop telling our high school students, our college students, that you need to find a career that is going to make you a lot of money. We need to tell them, we, you need to find a career that is going to make you happy and that you're going to find purpose. And you are going to make money, but your number one uh, mission and goal is so that you can feel like you're going to work every day and it's not working. It's not doesn't feel like work. You're going to work every day, regardless of whether you're getting paid or not, because you love it so much. And of course, you are getting paid. But that is the goal. We need to be teaching people that journalism and that profession is as important as any other profession, whether it is a firefighter or a law enforcement or a doctor or an attorney, whatever you regard as important in this uh, world, in this country as a prestigious job, we need to put journalism back at the top because it's our democracy fails. We fail as a country without journalism. The gaps grow, okay? The, the differences in class and status grow when we don't have journalists shining a light on all of these topics, okay? So it's happening on, on college campuses. You can Google, you can find out everywhere it's going on. But also, we're seeing this happen at high schools. We're seeing high school administrations try to censor the work of student journalists. There's a story in Mountain View, the newspaper there, you've got journalists who are suing, okay, taking legal action against their administration for, you know, allegedly prior restraint, trying to censor articles before publication. And this is outrageous because journalism the core of what we do is critical thinking, meaning we, we, we see something and we don't necessarily accept the obvious on the surface interpretation of that. We see it, but we critically think it through. This is an incredible skill. We need to be teaching this to children in elementary school because I'm a grown man and I meet people my age and older who don't have critical thinking skills. Critical thinking is not being negative. It's not being cynical. It's about trying to understand not only what is happening in front of us, but why it's happening in front of us. And when you have high school journalists who have this skill, it's a beautiful, amazing thing because hopefully they're gonna go into the world and continue to practice journalism and make a difference in holding government accountable, holding corporations accountable, holding systems accountable, holding people in power accountable. That's what we want. We don't want high schools that tell journalists that they need to play nice to their administration because if they don't, it's going to you know, affect the school poorly. That's part of the problem. And I don't know how you can call yourself a, a place of education if you're not encouraging people to make independent decisions on their own, particularly 
in the world of journalism. We need to be teaching media literacy in elementary school, and I don't mean just identifying real news and fake news. I think that we've had a lot of attention on that, on that buzzword, but we need to be teaching people journalism at that level in terms of how to create, how to create a story, how to go out and talk to this person, talk to that person, do some research, put it all together and create a story that is true and accurate and represents as many perspectives that we can within the context of our deadline for that day or those days or that week. That's what we need to be teaching people how to do. Because what happens is people who don't learn that if you actually go out and talk to people, sometimes your, your perspective on things will change. You have people in these silos who are just getting reinforced what they want to hear and see through social media. And so if you say, you know, I know you're being really critical here and you think the media is all biased and you think that they're all, they all have an agenda or they're all controlled by some corporation. Here's the deal. Let me give you a notebook and, uh, you know, use your iPhone as a recorder. And I want you to go talk to these people. And then I want you to do your own research. And I want you to fact check all of them. And I want you to get it all done by the end of the day. So a whole world can see it. Once you do that, you immediately have instant respect for the world of journalism, for the art of journalism. And the more we can do that, I think the more respect we're going to have for this industry, because journalists that I know that I've worked with, and I've been in the industry for more than 20 years, um, they're not biased, right? They're just out doing their thing. They're just out trying to report as best as they can against adversarial circumstances, because most people don't want to talk to a journalist. Everybody loves journalism far away. Like they admire, look at that great journalism over there. Look at that investigative journalism they're doing over there. As soon as that investigative journalism comes inward in your community and it's around people you know, or you like, or your friends, all of a sudden it's like, hmm, what's the agenda? There's bias there. And we need to move away from that. Our system, our democracy, our country entirely depends on this. And it starts with a greater respect for the work that journalists do. We don't want journalists to be advocates. If you see a journalist covering a protest, um, you know, at a campsite at a college or university, and they're trying to talk to one of the pro-Palestinian prote protesters, they're doing their job. Okay? They are absolutely doing their job. No matter who they are talking to on that campus, they're doing their job because they believe that voices and perspectives are essential to the functioning of our democracy. We don't want to quash voices, right? Nothing works when you say only these voices are the ones we want to highlight. Everything works when you put everything out there for people to see on their own and make their own decisions. We do that with photographs, we do that with news, we do that with information. And that's 100% the best work we can all do. So if you if a journalist talks to you, if a journalist wants to approach you, if a journalist wants to take your picture and you're in a public place, I mean, they're doing their job, just like that firefighter's doing their job responding to you, just like law enforcement's doing their job, just like the attorney's doing their job, they're doing their job. And it is just as important work. Because without it, the people in power are just going to gain more power and going to exploit the people who have been exploited forever. And none of us is better for that. And I just want to say last thing on social media. We love social media because it allows people on the ground to be able to put their cameras out and capture all of this incredible news. And uh, we need that because journalists often don't get the access. They're blocked. They're pushed back. They're being told to, uh, you can't pass a barricade. You can't pass this tape, yellow tape. So we need that. And that's a great thing about social media. And we see that all over the world in countries where there is war and unrest. We see that. And so that's a great thing about our technology. So I just don't want to like sound like I'm like against people on their social medias in their own silos. 
Um, there's this incredible news gathering that's happening all over the world and in our country. We're able to see those images that we may not be able to see in the mainstream press, not because the mainstream press is censoring or silencing it. It's because they're not getting access to these sites, but people within that community are. And so they're showing it to the world. And that's incredible. And so we, we like that. We like that part of social media. So I just wanted to bring that to you today and just sort of just give a commendation to the great work that journalists are doing throughout this country. We need more of that. And I hope this sort of inspires and fuses this next generation you know, in high school, in college, to go out there and just grab journalism by the reins and say, this is this is our industry. This is our world. This matters more than anything. The functioning of our society and our democracy is so entirely dependent on our ability to do our jobs in the face of adversity without getting attacked, without getting harassed, without getting pepper sprayed, without getting arrested, without being censored by those in power. I hope this just lights a fire under all of the journalism uh, newsrooms across this country to say, yeah, we make a difference. We matter. What we're doing is important, and we're never going to let anyone censor us or tell us that what we do is wrong. Please hit subscribe on YouTube, visit SantaBarbaraTalks.com and have a great day. Thank you.